Hey people, my name is Austin and this is Real World Science. Today I want to tell you about an experiment of mine, but more specifically how someone has been sneaking around my experiment. And I know they've been sneaking because I caught them on camera. They haven't broken anything, they haven't taken anything, but more than anything, I just want to look them in the face and tell them that they are beautiful. Because it's an octopus. I have an octopus living in my experiment. As a quick review, this experiment features eight modules that you can see in this photo here. And each module features one coral cam and three tiles. The tile on the left from the camera's perspective is left untouched for a full year to see what recruits onto it. The tile in the middle gets swapped out every single month with a fresh tile straight from Home Depot. And the tile on the right gets a light scrubbing every month to remove the algae that have settled on that tile. And the lights just went out. Okay, lights are back on, where were we? Left hand tile, doesn't get touched for 12 months. Middle tile, swapped out every month, fresh from Home Depot. Right hand tile, scrubbed every single month with a soft bristle toothbrush. And that's just to remove the algae and stuff to see how that affects the trajectory of the community settling on that tile over time. Anyways, the point of this experiment is that eventually I hopefully will get corals settling onto these tiles, and my coral cams, which take three photos a day, will help me track the growth rates of those corals through time and relate some of that data back to the environment that those corals are living in. That's all well and good, but it's not what I'm here to tell you about today, because this is going to be a short video about our little octopus friend. Now. I don't know if this octopus is a male or a female, so just for the sake of it and because I loved this book as a child, I'm going to call this octopus Charlotte. And let's assume that it's a female. One, because female octopuses build dens, and I love the idea that an octopus is going to nest underneath my experiment, but also two, because Charlotte is just a beautiful name for mystical, smart, borderline magical creatures like Charlotte in Charlotte's Web. So Charlotte first popped up in November of 2020 on module five. And I thought to myself like, okay, cool. I got kind of lucky. This was a random occurrence where right at the moment that the coral cam was taking a photo, literally in that instant, an octopus was hanging out on my module, hiding behind the tile. And side note, I have no idea how Charlotte knew the camera was going off. She does appear to be hiding from the camera, but the cameras make no sounds and they don't have any lights that turn on when they actually go to take a photo. So magical octopus, right? Anyways, the following month, December, I didn't see Charlotte, but not because she didn't show up any photos. I didn't see her because the camera on module five actually malfunctioned. It didn't take any photos that month and you know, out of sight, out of mind, right? So I really wasn't thinking about Charlotte when January rolled around and I went and I collected my cameras and I looked through the data and bam, there she is again on module five behind the exact same tile behaving the exact same way, being camera shy, kind of huddled down. And it wasn't until December and looking at that photo from December that I really noticed how crazy small Charlotte is because that tile she's hiding behind is only about four inches across. It is not a big tile and her eyes must only be like an inch or an inch and a half apart. That is crazy, crazy small. I don't think I have ever seen an octopus out here that small. Then came March and my trip out yesterday to collect coral cams that were deployed in February and I've been photographing these modules three times a day ever since. Well, last night I was so tired. It was a long day and I was just kind of lazily scrolling through the images and before I know it, I hit the images for module five and again, just kind of like glassy eyed going through the data because there's so many photos that I have to look at and bam. Charlotte, right freaking there on module five. And she is not hiding behind a tile like before. Oh no, 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 no. Charlotte is out and about in all of her glory. I mean, look at her. She is beautiful and fascinating and gorgeous. You can literally see the intelligence in her eyes as she is looking back at the camera. And I have never, 
ever, 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 ever wished that I designed Coral Cams to have higher resolution cameras because I've never wanted more pixels in a photo before. So I could just zoom in and look at her closer, see her coloration, see her chromatophores, and see those beautiful octopus eyes. It was at this point that the curiosity really set in. I have now captured this octopus on three separate occasions spanning four months of Coral Cam data. That is not luck, that is a pattern. And that is what ecologists and biologists look for when we're out working in natural settings. We look for patterns, that is the core of biology. And really when you think about it, kind of the core of the human experience in a lot of ways, it's looking for patterns. So I went back and I said, what else could I learn about Charlotte from these photos? I go back and I look at the timestamps for all of these photos and guess what? she shows up not only on the same module, but every single photo that I have of Charlotte is from the exact same time of day. Somehow, I have had the crazy fortunate luck of timing Coral Cam to go off exactly when Charlotte is out for her afternoon walk at 12.30 p.m. So that's where we are now, Charlotte and I. We have a special relationship. She doesn't know who I am and she doesn't know that I take photos of her when she's not looking and oh wait, that sounds real creepy. I was proud of this experiment before because really in more of a pet project way, it was a cool opportunity for me to show off what Coral Cam can do. And I was hoping to use this little tool that I had created to measure growth of corals through time. And we've seen some cool stuff, like I'll put up on the screen right now, where I've actually captured cyanobacterial blooms wiping out turf algae on some of my tiles in a very short period of time. But now that I know a beautiful octopus has decided to call my modules home, or my module home, man, I am so proud of that. That takes it to a whole new level. I feel like somehow, even if temporarily, I have contributed back to the reef environment that has taught me so much over the past four and a half years that I have lived and studied here in Hawaii. I just wanted to share that with you. This one little bright spot, this curiosity that brought a smile to my face in an otherwise crazy time that we all live in. And I hope it does the same for you. I hope that this has made you smile, maybe even made you laugh, maybe made you curious about science in some way. And I promise you, the next time that I see Charlotte, I will post an update video, maybe with new photos of Charlotte. And if I'm ever fortunate enough to see Charlotte while I'm actually visiting this study site, I will bring you back photos or video. Until then, we're just gonna have to wait and wish her the best as she takes up residence and lives out her life underneath my coral cams. I hope this has made you smile as much as it has brought joy to me, and I will see you next time.